Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt and I do like video games. In today's video we've got some Xbox news to talk about because Microsoft and the FTC are currently in court because of obviously the ABK deal. Now I don't really want to talk about the ABK deal. I've talked about it ad nauseum on this channel and I haven't made a video on it and God knows how long, and I don't plan to make a video on it anytime soon. But there has been some news that came out yesterday as I'm recording this that was pretty interesting about Microsoft and Xbox and some acquisitions that they were looking into making before the ABK deal came along. So let's get into it and let's discuss. So acquisitions have been kind of a hot talking point in the gaming industry for a while now. It's always been something that's happened in the industry, but it's really ramped up since, you know, 2017, 2018, when Microsoft made that initial push with things like Ninja Theory and, and Exile and all those studios. And then it's kind of just risen from that point. You know, who's Microsoft going to acquire? Who's PlayStation going to acquire? Nintendo's off in the corner doing something else. Nobody knows what they're doing. They're just doing what they do. You know, before the generation even started, Microsoft announced they were acquiring ZeniMax, and then a few years later, we hear that they intend to acquire Activision Blizzard King. Now we fast forward to today, or I guess yesterday when this news came out, we've got this list from Idle Sloth over on Twitter of developers to watch. And these are developers that Microsoft was looking at acquiring in the future. Maybe they still are looking at acquiring them, but you know, at the moment, all their focus is on ABK right now. And in fact, it's actually a lot more developers than just what's on this list. It was a list of about a hundred developers and a few publishers that Microsoft was looking into acquiring, but there are some big ones. We'll be getting to those after this list, but I want to go through this list first because there's a few here that I find very, very interesting. Ember Lab Studio is the first one that I find super interesting. And if you don't know who Ember Lab Studio is, it tells you right there, they did Kane of Bridge of Spirits. Now, I know a lot of people who who follow this channel, who keep up to date with it, they're mostly Xbox centric. So you probably haven't played Kana Bridge of Spirits because it was a PS5 exclusive. It's also on PC as well. But guys, I think we're at a point with the studio where they're still actually really underrated. Obviously Kana Bridge of Spirits was their first game. That was the first game they've ever done and they absolutely nailed it. In fact, I would say Kana Bridge of Spirits is probably a top three PlayStation exclusive for me, honestly. Obviously you got God of War Ragnarok, I really enjoyed Spider-Man Miles Morales this generation, but Kane of Bridges Spirits might be number three on that list. And also before I continue, I want to correct myself really quick. Kane of Bridges Spirits was not a PS5 exclusive. It was a PlayStation console exclusive that also launched on PC. Now it wasn't exclusive to PS5 either. It was on PS4 and PS5. But the fact still remains that it was an amazing game. And it was a little weird because the marketing for the game leading up to its release, I was like, this game just seems like, you know, a happy, fun, silly game, right? And then you get the game and you play it and it's like way darker than you ever could have imagined. I think they did a really good job with that. They set up expectations for one thing and you got a lot of that, but it also had this really dark emotional story tied to it that was really, really well done. And I said it a while ago when I first played Kane and Bridge of Spirits when it launched, I think this studio makes sense for Microsoft. Now, obviously, I think, you know, it makes a little more sense for Sony because they made the game exclusive to Sony's platform. And I was kind of surprised when Sony announced they were buying Bungie as opposed to going after Ember Lab. Ember Lab made a really great game. Now, Bungie's amazing, don't get me wrong. If you get to own Bungie, own Bungie. But I was kind of surprised that Sony hasn't gone after Ember Lab yet. Now up next on this list is actually Moon Studios. And if you're unaware who Moon Studios is, they made both of the Ori games for the Xbox One, Ori in the Blind Forest and Ori in the Will of the Wisps. Both of them, phenomenal games. Ori in the Will of the Wisps is one of my favorite games of last generation in general. And actually speaking of Ori in the Will of the Wisps, check this out. I've actually got right here, or in the Will of the Wisps, the special edition. It's actually got the art book as well as the steel book case for the game. Phenomenal game, I really, really do love it. I think Moon Studios is actually really, really talented. And I know this acquisition, you know, might not ever happen because from what I understand, Moon Studios and Xbox kind of ended on 
pretty bad terms. I think Moon Studios wanted their games to be on more platforms. You know, their games eventually did go to Switch and everything, but I think they even wanted to be on PlayStation, and Microsoft was really all about that exclusivity and kind of keeping it to themselves, and Moon Studios didn't really love that idea. And so they kind of soured on each other. So I don't know if this acquisition could really, you know, make sense. But if they could mend that relationship, I think this acquisition does make a lot of sense. And again, this is all hypothetical. You know, Microsoft's very tied up with ABK right now. I don't think they're making any acquisitions for the foreseeable future while this thing is still in limbo. And up next on the list is the studio that I really think that Microsoft should be looking into. And that is Munfish. Now... If you're unaware who Munfish is, they actually just released their very first game ever into Game Pass on day one, and that was Atomic Heart. Now, this is one of my favorite games of the year so far, and I did treat myself to that special edition over on their website. It's a phenomenal game. Highly recommend checking out. It is still in Game Pass, obviously, so definitely check that game out if you haven't already. Super fun FPS game. And I think that's a studio with a ton of talent. And also shout out to Munfish really quick for making what is probably the most optimized game of the year. I mean, it's probably between either Atomic Heart or Dead Island 2. Both of those games are really, really well optimized. And they actually launched not completely broken on PC, which is very rare this day and age if you guys have been keeping up with that. Now up next on this list of studios, the one I want to talk about or the final one I want to talk about on this specific list here is Striking Distance Studios. Now if you don't know who they are, they actually made the Callisto Protocol and I am a little bit iffy on this studio. I was somebody who was really, really hyped for Callisto Protocol and it's not just me. Obviously a lot of people were hyped for Callisto Protocol. This game had a lot of hype going into its release and I got it day one, I played it, I beat it, I enjoyed my time with it, but there were some things in there that were just, you could tell it was their first game. You could tell it was the studio's first game as a group. Now obviously they got the lead guy from Dead Space making the game, but that lead guy can only do so much. There's a lot in that game that I think they did right, there's a lot in that game I think they did wrong, but I think with some tweaking, the sequel to Callisto Protocol could be something very, very special. And honestly, this is a studio that I'm surprised that Sony hasn't reached out and gotten in touch with, or maybe they have and we just obviously haven't heard about it, but I'm surprised Sony isn't on the phone with these guys. I mean, Sony did help fund a lot of this game. Sony gave them access to their motion capture studio. So I am surprised that Sony didn't reach out and say, hey guys, you want to join Team PlayStation? I wouldn't be against Microsoft reaching out and seeing what's up, but at the end of the day, I don't think this is the most appealing studio on the list. And that was the end of the list from Idlesloth's Twitter page, but we've also got this other huge list of like over 100 developers that Microsoft was looking at, and I've got the best from that list here from an article over on Tweaktown. Now, these are the developers that Microsoft was looking at. First on that list you see is Bungie. Now, Bungie obviously now, it's too late for that because Sony owns Bungie now. Now, if you remember back to when Sony acquired Bungie, there were some reports out there of Bungie going to Microsoft beforehand and saying, hey guys, we're willing to be acquired, but Microsoft said we want to own the IP, and Bungie wasn't okay with giving up the IP. If you guys remember, that was kind of the thing that screwed Bungie over back in the old days when Bungie signed away Halo to Microsoft, and then Bungie really wanted Halo back, but Microsoft didn't want to give it back. And according to all reports, Bungie said, get lost to Microsoft, and they went to Sony, and Sony said, hey, we'll acquire you, and you get to keep your IP, and Bungie was definitely on board for that, and so fast forward today, Sony owns Bungie. It's still very weird to say to me, honestly. Now the rest of this list, I'm just gonna fire off pretty quickly here. Up next is CD Projekt Red. I love CD Projekt Red. I don't think an acquisition for them makes sense at all, especially right now. They're on the uprise right now. I mean, I think if an acquisition ever made sense for CD Projekt Red, it would have been after Cyberpunk's release, whenever they kind of underperformed on consoles, sales were kind of dwindling. I think that was the time to acquire CD Projekt Red, but right now they're on the come up. I don't think they need acquired. I like what they're doing right now. I like them being available to everybody. I think it's a really good system they got going there. I can't wait to play a new Witcher game from CD Projekt Red. I can't wait for Phantom Liberty DLC for Cyberpunk. I'm really, really hopeful for CD Projekt Red. Whether they get acquired or not, 
whether it's by Microsoft or not, I think they're doing the damn thing right now. I don't think they need any help. Up next is Certain Affinity. Certain Affinity, I think, makes sense. I mean, from all reports, they're working on something Halo related which would be the Tatanka project that we keep hearing about but never seeing. But we know they're working on something with Halo, and historically, they work on a lot of Halo-related things for Xbox. So I think acquiring them, even as a support studio, if it comes down to it, just makes sense. Up next is Crytek. Again, this is a studio that I think makes sense for Xbox. Obviously, we remember back to the Xbox One launch, Rise was my favorite launch game of that generation. Really underrated game. I remember looking back at the Metacritic score for that game a few years ago, and I was shocked to see it was as low as it was. I think it was like a 60 seven or something might have been in the 50s or something i don't know but it was a super low score and i remember back to playing that game I'm like that game blew my mind i mean everything from the graphics to the gameplay to the online gladiator modes it was just super fun that was the game when i got my xbox one where i was like okay now i'm in the next generation like i played dead rising 3 i was like this is fun this is fine right it's fun but when I turned on Rise, I was like, okay, this is what next gen looks like. And I think, you know, compared to these other studios that we've talked about, I think they're at a point where an acquisition maybe makes sense for them a bit more than these other studios because they haven't really been releasing tons of games. Obviously, they've announced they're coming back to the Crisis series. We're going to see how that pans out. I've got my fingers crossed that they do it right, but we'll see in due time. But I think it does make a lot of sense to look into acquiring Crytek because God knows we need Rise too, And I want to see them bring back Crisis in a really awesome way. Like I want that game to have a huge budget because Crisis was a super underrated series. I don't, I don't think it got a lot of love. People look at that game or that series like it was just a showpiece for PCs and consoles. And to a certain degree it was, but the gameplay in those games was phenomenal. Now as for the rest of this list, there's a few big, big time developers here that I'm probably going to skip over. You look at something like FromSoft. FromSoft would be an amazing acquisition for Microsoft, but at the end of the day, I don't think they're in a position where they need acquired. I don't think they need much help right now. I mean, you look at something like Elden Ring, it sells like crazy. It's critically acclaimed one of the greatest games ever made. It's in my top 10 games of all time list. And then on top of that, they're getting ready to release a new Armored Core in August. And then after that, we get an Elden Ring DLC sometime later this year. There's a lot to be excited about for From Software. I just don't think they're in a position to be acquired right now. They're kind of thriving. Now, as for the rest of this list, I think IO Interactive makes a lot of sense. I think People Can Fly makes a lot of sense. I think Remedy Entertainment makes a lot of sense. Even though we did hear the reports, you know, after Quantum Break, the relationship kind of soured between Remedy and Xbox. But I do think that acquisition makes a lot of sense. And up next, folks, I really, really want to talk about Techland. I mean, I'm just going to get this out here. I have a pretty big personal bias for Techland. Techland is probably my favorite studio that Microsoft doesn't own. I mean, you look at Techland's resume. Obviously, they did Dead Island 1. They did Dead Island 1, a cult classic game. People love it, right? But look at their resume with just Dying Light. Dying Light 1, phenomenal. Probably one of my favorite games of last generation. And there wasn't really a huge story with Dying Light 1. It wasn't some emotional, overdrawn story. It was pretty basic, pretty generic story. Super fun gameplay, really fun parkour elements but it could definitely be improved on. And my God, did they ever improve on it with Dying Light 2. Dying Light 2 is Dying Light 1, but better in every single conceivable way that it possibly could be. It's got a way better story. Now, like I said, the story in Dying Light 1, you can take it or leave it. It's pretty generic, standard, zombie stuff, whatever. The story in Dying Light 2 was really, really good. The characters really, really fleshed out. I thought the RPG elements in Dying Light 2, phenomenal. The impact that your choices had on the world and the characters in that world, amazing. 
I mean, you factor in all of that. All of that was stuff that wasn't in Dying Light 1. Now you bring all that to Dying Light 2, and then you bring the stuff from Dying Light 1 that was there, the combat, the parkour, the exploration, and then you turn all of that up to like a thousand. Everything from Dying Light 1 was better in Dying Light 2. It's one of my favorite games of this generation so far. Not to mention, I think this hypothetical acquisition would make the most sense out of any that they could possibly do because Microsoft was working with Techland for Dying Light 2. Much in the same way that Sony was working with Striking Distance Studios for Callisto Protocol. Like, Sony helped fund that game. Microsoft helped fund Dying Light 2. But I could talk about Techland for hours and hours, so I gotta stop myself. But before we get out of here on this video, I want to talk really quickly about these publishers. We got 505 Games, Focus Home Interactive, Paradox Interactive, as well as Sega. Now, obviously, I think the most obvious choice here for Xbox. Now, I might not love it, but it's going to be Sega. Sega and Xbox have a lot of history. The original Xbox was essentially Dreamcast 2, and Xbox 360 was essentially Dreamcast 3. There's a lot of history there between those two, and I wouldn't be surprised if even after this ABK deal, maybe a few years later down the road, if Microsoft acquires Sega. I think that probably is very realistic. But that's really all I've got for today. There's actually a list of a lot more than this, but these are kind of just the highlights, the ones I wanted to highlight, the ones I found in articles that were highlighted. I wanted to talk about these ones specifically, but there are huge lists out there of developers that Microsoft was looking into acquiring at one point or another. But leave a comment down below. Do you even care about acquisitions? I know a lot of people don't. I particularly don't, unless it's Techland or Zenimax, then... I really do care, but this whole ABK stuff, I don't really care. You know, if they got Sega, I think that's cool for the people who love Sega, but I don't really care. But if you do care, let me know in the comments below who would you like to see them acquire, what makes the most sense in your opinion. Leave that comment down below, tell me all about it. Leave a like if you like the video, and if you're enjoying this kind of content and you want to stay up to date with it going forward over here on the channel, the best way to do that is consider subscribing consider ringing that notification bell because that helps you stay up to date with everything that happens over here on the channel and it helps promote me in the algorithm helps push the videos out to more people and i really do appreciate that and with that being said thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video